Hello, and welcome to Crew Call, the Below the Line podcast by, for, and about the crew. Today's guest is a non-union grip and electrician who works in a small market, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Welcome, Chandler Forbes. And let's just start at the beginning. Um, when did you get started in the business? Uh, I moved to Grand Rapids, where I live now, in 2006 to go to um, Calvin College School here. I went there for media production for two years, and uh, the second year of school, I moved in with some of the guys that I'd met at Calvin to a, a house. Uh, one of the guys' dad owned the house, we rented the house, and we lived there. And this one particular guy, Gabe Burgess, was a big influence on me. He started coming back. Uh, he dropped out of Calvin, and he started coming back from, from to every day talking about all these awesome things that they were doing, being out on set, all this kind of cool stuff. Now, meanwhile, I'm doing a liberal arts media education you know, at a school, and mostly it just feels like I'm taking history classes and English classes and stuff like that. <laughs> so I asked him, you know, where, where are you going? What are you, what are you doing? And he told me about um, a Compass College of Cinematic Arts, which was like a, a two-year film program specifically, not accredited, just a, a technical school. So I dropped out of Calvin College and went to Compass and uh, got um, uh, whatever, uh, you know, a technical certification from Compass, not an actual degree. And that, that's kind of how I got started, um, was going to a, a film school. Oh, cool. And so how did you break in? Uh, Compass had a, had a cool thing. I, I was the beta year, so it was very early in their program. And this was before they were accredited. And what they were doing at the time was for a year, we'd, we'd take classes there. Um, I think it was like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We were there from nine to six or something like that, taking courses. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays were giving you to um, you know, go out and sh- shoot your projects and do your homework and get together with classmates or whatever. You do that for a year. And then the second year, they had an internship program. Basically, what happened was they had a supervisor, like an internship supervisor guy. Uh, at the time I was going, with our internship supervisor was Evan Coons, still really good friends with him, awesome guy. And he helped you get connected for a year with different shows that were going on in the area. So that's how oh. he helped me. He helped me get on my first couple shows during that internship. You'd go to a show or you go work on something and then you come back to him and sit down and talk to him about it and he'd give you feedback on I just about how it went and you talk to him about how it went and he'd give you feedback on, you know, what the next step would be and, you know, you know, what problems did you have on that show and how can we make that better for the next show? And so he got me my first two feature films um, during that internship program, which was really what allowed me to get my foot in the door was him being sort of a liaison oh, nice. for the students into school. So it was really good to have someone like that who was able to help the students into programs, into, nice. into film production, into actual movies. So now was this school um, like for all different areas of production or was it specifically for grips and electricians? No, Compass is actually primarily um, very highly story structured um, writing and directing kind of school. Oh, okay. Uh, but they def- they definitely do cover other things. We had film history classes, we had cinematography classes in which we did do lighting, and they brought in um, local people from the area. That's where I met um, my sort of mentor in lighting, who's named Brian Pozlensky, who's out in New Orleans right now. Uh, he was the one who kind of showed me the rope got me started with grip and electric work and was the first person to hire me at, not just as an internship but he was the first person to hire me on a music video where i got paid for the first time which just blew my mind at the time <laughs> to, to do the work so now how did you get into the area that you that you're into now the grip you do grip and electrician work right yeah i do I'm, i do grip electric work um very rapid isn't really big enough to say that you're one or the other. I mean, in, in, in LA or, or New York or someplace like that, you could certainly, I mean, you know, in LA, there's the two unions, there's 80 and 728. And when you're in one, you kind of focus on 80 is grip, 728 is electric. Right. But in Grand Rapids, it's, it's sort of not big enough for you to focus on one or the other. You can't really, I mean, you can be known to be better at being an electrician than a grip. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do both. 
And now I lost your question in that little tangent that I just went on. What was the question? Well, because the school was, you know, writing and all that and like everything. How mm-hmm. did you, how did you get into land and grips and a uh, grip and, and electric oh, yeah. work? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good question. It's kind of hard for me to figure out exactly how that happened. Um, as I recall, I was helping other students out. We'd all help each other out on our student projects. And I've always been a very hands-on guy. Um, mm-hmm. I come from a very hands-on family, a lot of engineers in my family. My dad did all the work on his own home, plumbing, electrical, maintenance, um, car work. Uh, I'm a mechanic. I do all my own car work as well as car work on other people's cars for money occasionally mm-hmm. on the side. So I was, I was a very hands-on guy. And when I got on my first student project, you know, and we, they, people brought out the lights, I was just immediately interested in in all that. I was interest, interested in electricity and voltage and wattage. And it just sort of appealed to me from the upbringing that I had had and from the, the parenting that I'd had that that was, that, that was, this was cool, cool stuff. So I just started doing it. And then before you know it, every time there's a student project, it's like, oh, you should hire Chandler to do the lighting. Get it on mine and get it on the last one. And then uh, okay. I guess I do lighting. You said earlier that, um, you know, when you did your first couple of movies, the the person that helped you get the internships. What were those movies? My, uh, the very first feature film I ever did, uh, was called chaos experiment. And, um, that had, um, Val Kilmer in it. Okay. And that was, uh, sort of a dramatic thriller kind of thing about a guy who locks people in a steam room oh, and, uh, nice. ransoms them. It's, yeah. It's sort of <laughs> a strange film. It, I didn't particularly, enjoyed the final product, but mm-hmm. it was the most incredible learning experience. And the guy who, um, after that show, uh, owns a studio here in Grand Rapids and I met him on that show so, oh, nice. and I've been working with him too. So that, that show introduced me to a lot of people that I had continued to work for, but I was, I mean, I was green on that show, green. I had no idea what I was doing. They actually, the producers of that show came to Grand Rapids. And they actually contacted Compass directly and said, hey, do you have any people that would like to intern on our show? And Compass said, I'm sure we do. So we all went out there, a whole class, to the like 50th floor of the really nice hotel downtown and met in the suite with the producer and the director and the line producer and just introduced ourselves to all of them with our teachers there. And any, everybody else, every single person in my class PA'd on the show, except me. Mm-hmm. I gripped with the grip and electric. Now, I didn't know what in the world I was doing, but everybody else was a PA and I was a grip. So that, that was really cool to see all these other, you know, students who were production assistants and they, they were all learning about being a production assistant and a lot of them, you know, did, did very, very well at that. But here I was getting right into grip. I didn't, I've never PA'd a day in my life. I have a ton of respect for what PAs do, but I, I never had to PA a day in my life, which is, kind of different than I think most people's story. Most people who go into one department or the other usually start off as a PA. I never did that. And in some ways probably I should have because I made a ass of myself once or twice on that show. Um, one particular time the gaffer sent me up onto a balcony rooftop area and they had a couple can lights down there and they were aiming up at the front of this hotel, lighting up the front of this hotel, sort of just giving me a dramatic upwards wash on the front of the hotel, highlighting it, sort of that really dramatic up lighting, you uh-huh. know, beams of light. And they had, this was one of the biggest days on the show, and they had a 30-foot techno crane up there, big techno crane. And they were doing this big sweeping shot of Val Kilmer walking up to the front of the hotel and walking in, and they hand up to see, you know, the hotel kind of lit up in all of its glory. And I had adjusted these lights and was talking on the walkie-talkie with my, the gaffer, and then he just kind of went silent and wasn't able to talk to me anymore. Later, I figured out that he'd gotten busy and, you know, I was just a little lowly kind of intern in the department. So he wasn't, you know, really prioritizing my question. Mm-hmm. But I thought that the walk had gone dead or something. I didn't know what was going on. So I stood there right on that rooftop, just staring down at this techno crane. No idea what, what was going on, really. Turns out they did two or three takes with me just dead in the middle of the, <laughs> of the take. And nobody noticed at first because they're so focused on Val Kilmer coming up and everything else that they just missed 
that I was right there in the, in the middle of the shot. And, um, one of the other guys on the channel who had experience, um, came on the walkie and said, Chandler, uh, how long have you been standing there? Oh, no. And I said, oh, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, something like that. <laughs> and that will get on the walkie and goes, Chandler, get down, 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 Chandler, get down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did you get the yeah. job because of like the, te- like, when you introduced yourselves, you just said what you had, what you, mostly you did, or did the teacher say, well, you know, Chandler has done this for the student movies or how did it get to the point where they said, okay, we'll hire you as a grip. Yeah, they, well, they, they, they didn't, it was an internship. Um, but yeah, the teachers spoke on my behalf, which was okay. extremely nice. They said, you know, um, these guys are all interested in sort of, and stuff like that Chandler specifically has expressed an interest and that's you know that's a lot of I mean kind of putting your foot out there and kind of reaching out there and saying hey I think I could and it takes a lot of guts to do that kind of stuff sometimes especially when you don't know very much yeah so I had come up to the teachers and said it specifically like when we go to this meeting I would really like to be put forward for the role of a triple electric intern and they said all right we can we can ask and they asked and um, that department in particular was a little understaffed on that show. So, uh, they were happy to have another, another set of hands that was willing to, you know, run like crazy and lift heavy things. And okay. that's what I did. So when you work on a show, do you do both electric and grip work or is it one or the other? It depends on the scale of the feature. Um, on smaller shows, it's very common to, for those departments to sort of cross over in between each other when you have maybe four guys total covering all of Grip and Electric and a, you know, a five-ton package full of gear. Very common for those departments to sort of cross over. Okay. But on, on larger shows, for sure, I will do one or the other specifically. Um, one of the bigger shows that I've worked on today was Mom's Night Out, which shot in 2013 yeah. in Birmingham and Alabama. And on that, I was Best Boy Electric. And all I did on that show was let them talk. I didn't okay. touch the grip truck. I only walked into the grip truck to talk to the best boy grip. I mean, so it, I was very focused on electric. But it sort of just depends on the scale of stuff. On commercials or something like that, you really don't separate grip and electric very much. They're just kind of all one part. At least here in Grand Rapids, I can't. So what does your job right. entail? Let's say when you're doing both. It, it, it's all lighting. The, it's the Department of Lighting and Camera Support. Mm-hmm. Lighting is more of electricians and then grip does more camera support. So grip does dollies and cranes and then uh grip also takes care of any large light softening or control work. That's kinda of what uh grips do. So the giant black things to stop the sunlight or giant white things to bounce the sunlight or um the film light. That's kind of the grip side of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's um it's a lot of carrying really big, heavy equipment. Um, uh, for electricians, it's a lot of cable. We have a ton of electrical cable that we will run out from a generator and run onto set to power all of the lights and then also to provide power to set. But most of that, uh, it's, such, it's, it's really high wattage. We have, we have a lot of wattage, really high output generators specifically for the massive lights that we'll bring out. We'll bring, I mean, lights out that are 18,000 watts, you know, whereas your standard household bulb is whatever, 65 watts. So we have to have a lot, a lot of power running into that. And um, it's just a lot, a lot of heavy. It's kind of manual labor with style, really. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to know what you're doing and um, the, because the equipment is highly specialized, very, very specific stuff. And it's used only for film work these kind of lights. You'd never have a light like this in your house, you know, lighting a room. It's not that light. Though we do do deal with those occasionally as well. Any, any light that's, um, maybe in the shot, um, or in front of the lens is we call a practical. So it's a, it's a distant fixture. And we do, we do deal with those. Uh, sometimes we have to, you know, um, soften them or put black around them to stop light from bouncing out of them in the wrong way or, Swap out the wattage of the bulb for a specific one we want, or we'll put a dimmer on that light. And all of those kind of concepts, softening the light, 
blacking the light, dimming the light, changing the water to the light, take all that stuff and then apply it to our film specific lights. And that's all behind, it. you know, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff involved in it. It's kind of hard to summarize what I do, but that's sort of generally it, I think. Right. Because you're doing both. For a typical lighting setup, I guess that's a good way of going with it. You, you have actors in front of the camera. I'm just pointing at the, the actors and they, maybe they stand up or they sit down during the shot or they walk into camera and then they sit down and have a conversation, something like that. So, um, first of all, depending on the, you know, the room that you're in, like, uh, if it's a bedroom during the day, you're going to have a lot of sunlight coming into the window. So you might, um, put lighting units outside the windows and then drive in through the windows with your lighting units and the grips might come out side and put blacks up to stop the natural sunlight from coming in so that the sunlight continues to come in at one specific angle during the course of the shot. Okay. Obviously, you're going to do take after take after take. Right. You're going to change camera angles if the long dialogue sequence and the sun's moving across the sky. So it's going to yeah. change in, you know, it's going to be casting different shadows and it's not going to look like it all happened in the five minutes of actual conversation that it's going to be on screen. Yeah. It's going to look like it took a whole day to shoot and the light's moving all over the building. Right. So we'll stop the natural sunlight and then set up our own lights outside to establish a certain direction of light. And then, um, you know, focus on lighting the faces and making sure that there's not so much light that it just turns white, that it goes overexposed. You have meters to check that with. And then making sure that there's enough light that you get proper detail on somebody's face. And then depending on the mood of the piece, you also are very specific as to how much light you apply and form of light, if it's a, you know, say if it's a rom-com or something like that, or romantic comedy, and they're having kind of a funny talk or a funny interaction, you usually use very soft light, very even light um, from the one side of the face to the other side of the face. It wouldn't be that much different in light. That's called a, that's your contrast ratio. So you have a low contrast ratio. And then say um, it's an action film or it's a thriller or something like that. In that case, you'd want more dramatic feel you want harder, stronger light. You want a high contrast ratio. The one side of the face is brightly lit and the other side is almost black. Mm. Stuff like that. So depending on the, the nature of what the actors are doing, the gaffer and the VP work out kind of what the best lighting scheme is. And then they send that out to us and we implement that. Those lights up and table them all up, black out, stop the sunlight, and aim them and tweak them and all that kind of stuff. Now, back to... Um Speaking of like the the unions and the local departments and stuff like that, do you have to be in the union um, to work out in Grand Rapids? You do not. No. You do not. Uh, we do have, we have an IOT chapter in Grand Rapids. It's local 26. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of super great guys that work in that uh, chapter. Um, it is a mixed local, though. So local 26 covers stage work and okay. film work. Okay. And the majority of the people that work in Local 26 currently are stage people. So uh -huh. they, when a, a show comes to town or a theater production or uh, a musical group or a band or whatever, they'll do all that kind of stuff. Oh, Very okay. few of the people in 26 are dedicated to film work. Are you um, in 26? I am not. I okay. am not. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to joining 26. A lot of really good guys in there. But I just haven't had the need at this point in time to... Except, and does it affect your job prospects? Do, is it better to be in it? Would it help or no for what you're doing? So rarely are the films that come through Grand Rapids of the size that you have to be union. Okay. Um, it, it doesn't affect my job that badly, I don't think. Okay. Now, if I did join 26, other unions would permit me to come work under their jurisdiction. So mm -hmm. I'm on the west side of Michigan and then on the east side is just Detroit's union is 38. And okay. if you're in local 26, you can travel across the state and go work for 38 if they want you to. Ah. So I could be going out of state or across state and working for, for, under other unions if I were to join my local. Okay. So it would only help base, it would help in that aspect of it if you had to travel somewhere else. Yeah, it would, it would help. It would help more in that aspect. But I do okay. go to Detroit and work on things just, I work on the, the smaller things that come through Detroit, not necessarily the big ones. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the structure of your department. 
Um, sure. Is it different for grip and electrician? The, the titles are a little different, but for the most part, the, the, the roles are sort of a mirror of each other. Okay. So the head, head person of the grip electric department, the, 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 the boss of every single person is the director of photography. Okay. All orders come from the director of photography and he makes the final call on it. Um, but he doesn't, you know, do any of the nitty gritty work of how we're supposed to run cable and pairing, you know, dropping our, our distribution of power supply gear for the next 16 setup. He doesn't think about any of that stuff. He just thinks about what's the best light to use in the situation to get the most right dramatic effect. And that's going to give me the look at it. And so he comes up with all that kind of stuff based on, you know, going through the screenplay and the script with the actors and all that pre-production that he has to go through. And then he coordinates with Gaffer, who is the head of the electrical department, also known as the chief lighting technician. Okay. And the key grip, who's the head of the grip department. And those guys um, hand orders and information down to their best boys. So that's the next person under the Gaffer and the key grip is their best boys. Best boy electric, best boy grip. Okay. And then underneath those are the grips and the electrician. So that's the structure of it. So when you're doing both, how does that work for you? Usually what ends up happening is the key grip role. I don't, and I don't know why this is, but the key grip role tends to get uh, set aside and the gaffer ends up doing both uh, gaffing and key gripping. Oh, and then okay. he passes everything down to grip slash electric. Uh, um, because, I think it's because without the light, to begin with, there's really nothing for the grips to do. Well, okay. not as much. Okay. The grips rely on us. The, the grips often work behind the electricians, so to speak. Right. Kind of cleaning up after us. We'll set a light. And we'll do this to the light. We'll put it in place. And then the grips will come along and they'll soften it and they'll black one side of it and they'll tweak it and they'll fine tune it so that it looks really nice. Right. But we have to set the light first yeah. a lot of the time. You said it. They're kind of controlling it in a sense. Yes. That's the that's exactly what happens. Okay. Um, why those two departments got separated to the extent that they are, I, I don't really know because they do work together right. very, very closely, very, very hand in hand. And then grips also get into um, strange rigging situations and strange support situations where they have to, or for instance, when you have a steady cam mm -hmm. out in the plane, the dolly grip will end up oftentimes being a spotter for the steady cam. You know, especially if the steady cam guy has to move fast for the shot, yeah. the actors are running. Yeah. The dolly grip will end up holding on to the vest of that steady cam operator, making sure he doesn't grip and fall. Okay. So the grips have stuff that they do that's entirely separate from electricians that has nothing to do with what we do. Mm -hmm. But for the lighting side of things, the grips have to often come along behind us and sort of work after we've worked. Do electricians work on anything else other than light? It, they're called electricians, but they're more like sort of long term for it would be set lighting technician. Okay. Uh, electricians just short or juicer. Some people uh, will call them. Okay. Really, it's it's lighting stuff. All right. Uh, we just deal with so much power that we end up being called electricians. Power is so much of what we do. What types of tasks for you? I, I'm going to go with electrician now. Um, is the most difficult to perform. And a lot of it's just labor. I mean, a lot of it's really labor intensive and that, mm -hmm. that tends to wear you out dealing with all that heavy cable. But as far as what's, what's mentally challenging, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it, a lot of that goes into the, because so much of the stuff they were dealing with is so highly specialized. Uh -huh. We have like specifically that we call, um, HMIs. Uh -huh. and they are, that's an arc light. Okay. And um, it goes along with those. It's usually the most difficult thing that we'll do on a given day. So we plug a light in, turn it on, strike it up, and it fires up. And then for some reason, two minutes later, it just shuts off. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly we're in a panic, and we're in a rush. And that's usually, that probably is the most difficult part of any given day. Is that, that moment when what in the world has gone wrong? Is the generator out of gas? Is there a cable broken somewhere? Did the bulb go on the light? You have to go through this diagnosis process, but you have to do it really, really quick because everybody's waiting for that light to come back up to speed because the cameras were just about to roll. That's mm. probably the most stressful moment any day when that happened. Okay. And then, and, and there are a hundred different things that could possibly be the cause of one light shutting off. So troubleshooting. And you got to figure out 
Which one? Yeah, the troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. And troubleshooting when you're on the spot specifically, when you don't have time to, you know, and everybody starts running around like crazy going, ah, what happened? <laughs> now, do you find that, you know, since you guys are kind of similar, like the grips and the electricians, because you work doing the same type of stuff, um, is there a rivalry mm-hmm. between that department? Yes. There is? Generally, there is a good, there's a, there's a good natured rivalry between the departments, and there's a lot of joking between the two departments. Um, electricians are kind of referred to, known as sort of geek and nerds, because <laughs> They have a head full of knowledge about voltage and wattage and cable and amperage and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And grips are sort of regarded as knuckle draggers. <laughs> you know, yeah, sort of the grip labor is more intensive in many ways than the electrical labor. And the electricians, they have to be kind of nerdy to get into all the lights and stuff because they're very technical and complicated and full of electronic complicated stuff. So you're the brain and they're the brawn. Yeah, and that's a simple way of breaking it down. Mm-hmm. That's not really accurate because the grips deal with um, a lot of what, what's complicated on the grip side of stuff, especially is um, stresses and stress factors dealing with gear and specific rigging situation. Mm-hmm. So they might have to build a platform in a, in a hurry because the dolly, you know, the road or the hill comes there. We're coming to a hill. Mm-hmm. Suddenly it goes down like this. We need to build a platform out there because we want the dolly track to be level as it goes across this whole dolly movement. You know, and they might have to just pull that out yeah. and suddenly start whipping together something out of wood and cutting and sawing and build something real quick. Or we might have to have a light rigged to some crazy point up in some building and they got to get on ladders and get up there and find the best way to anchor to this current structure in place without marking it or damaging it if it's, a, you know, not a set. So they have to get up there and find the best way to anchor to that location without drilling holes and things necessarily. So there's a lot of understanding of the gear that they're using and safety is huge. And safety really does tend to fall more on grip side than it does electric side. The key grip okay. um, is very conscientious of safety, but he's often put in a place where he has to put people on things that could potentially be dangerous if he wasn't aware of the best way to rig it, safety it, get it anchored properly so that nothing falls off or nobody falls. Now, as an electrician, do you have any interaction with the, the cast members? Um, yes. I say, excuse me. That's pretty much it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. No, that's my biggest interaction. Or if I'm carrying something large and pointy, I'll Mm -hmm. say point. And then they'll go, Oh, and then move out of the way. But that's about it. That's about it. I mean, if I'm gaffing, then I will have more interaction with them. Right. Because I might ask them to take a step forward or a step back or move into the light. Or I might ask them to show me their action real quick, repeat what they just did so that I can see how, how they're moving through the light that I've set, so that I know that it's set properly to cover their whole action. But on a big feature film as an electrician, almost no interaction with the actors, unless they want to come talk to me. <laughs> Um, now there is of course a lot for your movies and TV series outside of the major production centers. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to support yourself with fewer productions? It is, it is, it is difficult. You have to be more willing to, you have to be willing to work for less sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you have to be willing to travel. I I do travel. I, when I did mom's night out in 2013, that was in Birmingham. I went Mm -hmm. down to Alabama at, and then um, I've been down to Virginia working on shows down there. And then I go out to Detroit to work on shows there. Recently, I was in um, Northeast Michigan, north mm-hmm. of Detroit, a ways. I uh, should film up there. So there's a lot more traveling that you probably have to do, not working in a major production hub. Mm-hmm. And then you also have to work on projects that you might not be as excited about, probably, because yeah. there aren't as many options. Yeah. Um, so, you know, commercials don't usually you know, get your creative juices flowing and get you that interested in them, but right. they, they pay the bills and they can be fun if you're working with a good crew. That- yeah. But do you find it's, it, it would be harder to get into the major ones and therefore it'd be less, less work. Or do you find that if you're known, you would still be able to, if it was in town, you would still be able to get into that production. Yeah. No, if something comes through town, I'm going to be on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that, that sounds a little, myself a little egotistical, but 
because Grand Rapids is a small area, we all, everybody knows each other. It's, okay. a, it's a tightly knit community here. Right. Um, what's going on? Word about it spreads like wildfire. It, it, you know, it, it, it's like a bunch of housewives gossiping or something like that. The way <laughs> talk of a feature film spreads around the community. <gasps> and everybody's like, did you hear that such and such and such and such might be coming to town? So if there's a position for you on that, and if it comes up, hey, do you guys know any grips? Well, there are only eight of them. <laughs> in, in, in okay. A, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that is nice. It's nice to be known, and it's nice to feel like you're a core component of the community that you're in. Yeah. That, that really feels like something. When, when you're known, I mean, there, there are certain guys in the area that I know specifically for being really good in one area and being just kind of the guy to hire. If you want a really good dolly grip, you go to Matt Lone. You know, you just that's what you do. Yeah. Why would you go to anybody else? There's only eight people in Grand Rapids that do grip electric work anyway. He's the best one. That's very nice. Well, since the time that you started out, has, has there been many changes in the industry? When I was going to school, digital, we talked about digital stuff all the time. Digital was definitely, you know, what was coming our way as far as camera technology goes. I've only worked on two projects, two teachers now that have shot actual film. Okay. Um, and I have never personally worked with film as a gaffer. But digital has been my life the whole time I've been in the industry. Okay. But specifically what's changing about urban electric work is uh, advancing technology, especially in LED. LEDs are really changing a lot of how we do things. And they're opening a lot of opportunities up for us, which is really cool. LEDs are, are offering some things that they're offering light output in a smaller package than we've had before mm. using less current than we've ever had before. Okay. And that, and that opens up some interesting, um, interesting new things that you can do. And it allows you to do things quicker. Now the, the downside of that and, I'm sure the old school ACs and camera guys would say the same thing about sort of the transition from film digital is that LEDs are so much easier. You mm -hmm. can just go out and buy it, plug it in, turn it on, and it works. Yeah. And you get people who think that they can kind of do the job without as many people because now the technology is yeah. simpler and better. And yeah. that's not necessarily the case. You still need to have a professional who understands the equipment well, they be able to deliver to you a quality, well lit, good looking product that reflects the setting and the mood and characters and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But all that being said, I'm excited about the technology in uh in the tools of my trade. And I think LEDs are really, really fascinating and I love working with them, playing with them. And it's so cool to see new stuff come out and to get to use new stuff. So that's probably the one of the most notable changes that I've seen. Occur. Makes your job easier, but it also creates that, like you said, that problem of then they think they don't need someone or yeah, that someone else can do the job that doesn't have the experience and the knowledge that you have. Yep. Yep. At the other hand of that, it, that does open up opportunities for people to take a small portable light unit like that on a battery pack and go light something with it that they never would have been able to before on the budget that they have. And that's okay. fantastic. Well, yeah. You know, it's exciting to see people getting out there and being able to use lights in places that they couldn't before because they didn't have the money to haul an entire crew and a generator out there. Right. And just you know, all they need is just this little light and they can throw a battery on it. And there you go. And yeah. it, it's great. And they're able to do more filming. And that's awesome. Yeah. So plus and minuses. Hmm. Yeah, Balances absolutely. out. <laughs> So with all this being said, is there anything, if you could change anything, you could do anything you wanted to and you could change anything, what would it be? I would be taller. <laughs> that would help. <laughs> um, a lot of the time, the stuff we're doing, we end up having to reach up pretty high to put something up on something else or something's way up there in the air. And uh, I'm one of those guys that I always need an apple box or a ladder. <laughs> I, I, I'm not short, but I'm it's a little bit below probably average male height. And when you're tall, you are, I mean, I'll hire tall guys just because they're tall sometimes. I mean, not yeah. only because they're <laughs> tall, but you think to yourself when you're putting together a crew, we don't have any tall people in here. We need to get the tall person. 
because they make things so much faster when they don't have to bring a ladder with them every single time they need to put a scrim in a light. You know, they just <laughs> reach up there and drop it in. All right. Well, that's about all that we've got. Um, is there anything else interesting that you might want to add for our listeners? Yeah, I think there was something I was told when I was going to Compass, um, local producer, or, you know, I'm sorry, I apologize. He was a director of photography. He came by and he talked to the class. And he said something that's really stuck with me. And that is, not every job you take will be worth it. Hmm. And I, 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 that meant a lot to me. I, I thought about that a lot since he said it. Um, just because it is work doesn't mean it's good work. Sometimes you work on something and you, you, you will regret that you made that decision. You will regret that you said yes to that. And it's okay to say no sometimes. When someone's offering you 100 bucks a day, a day to go clear across the country and bust your butt on something and there's no overtime and there's no anything, you might be okay saying no to that. You yeah. know, seriously consider that no might be the right answer. Right. It just might be the right answer. If it's not going to teach you anything or further you or... Um and trust me, I've gone through this a lot myself. It's like, I have to say no. And even when I have clients for some freelance stuff that I do, it's like sometimes not every customer is a good customer. Nope. So it's kind of the same thing with jobs. You just have to know when to say no. And sometimes, like you said, you'll take it for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. And other times you'll take it because you know it's going to be a good experience. Yeah. I've taken jobs that were beneath my pay level and stuff like that you know, kind of beneath my, my experience at right. a level because I wanted to work with that particular director of photography yeah. or I wanted to work with that. I knew I was going to learn something from and that can be worth it. Well, thank you so much Chandler for taking the time out to, um, you know, do this interview and I'm sure the yeah, listeners are, yeah, the listeners are really going to appreciate it. Um, oh, very welcome. I really enjoyed it. Have a great day. You too. That's it for Crew Call. If you'd like to support the podcast, remember to click the Amazon link on the top of website before you go shopping. It doesn't cost you anything, and Amazon gives us a little kickback. Everyone wins. And if you like what you've heard, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. Good or bad, we really appreciate the feedback. Thanks again to Chandler for telling us about the film industry outside of Los Angeles. Tune in next week to hear from stuntwoman Anna Mercedes Morris.